So we're going to have a little look at how we're going to attach the likes of our Convio cutter bar to our machine. Now the process for this will be quite similar to that that we've had in the past on our conventional cutter bars, but it's very important that we make sure that we have the machine turned off when we attach the cutter bar purely for safety and also to ensure that our CBUS screen is loaded correctly with our cutter bar. Firstly, what we're going to do is interlock or locking the locking lever. So this is the locking lever which puts in the two locking pins either side of the cutter bar to lock it to our feeder house. Next, we need to attach the PTO shaft, making sure that when we're attaching the PTO shaft, we're aligning it correctly with that of the stub shaft on the feeder house and making sure that the PTO shaft is pushed into its fullest and clicks into position. If we do find that the shaft and the stub is not aligning correctly, we can adjust the table auger to then move the shaft. Finally, we then attach our umbilical cord. The umbilical cord is our connection of both hydraulic and electrical power from the cutter bar to the machine. So along the back wall of our Convio cutter bar, we also have side augers. These augers are predominantly used for the likes of larger, bushier crops. So for example, in the likes of oilseed rape, when I attach my side knife, these augers will be automatically turned on. However, with no side knife attached, I can also turn them off and on through the zebra screen. So good times to maybe use these would be the likes of some hybrid crops, larger, denser crops as well, just to aid with feeding from the outside of the cutter bar into the center of the cutter bar. There are two on the cutter bar themselves. You can see one located here and one located on the other side. They are at a set speed as well. The speed of these augers are determined by the cutter bar and the real speed. So we don't need to worry about setting speeds for these augers. We do also have some adjustments for the augers too. So the adjustment we can make for our side augers is the pitch adjustment. We can physically pitch the augers up and down across the cutter bar. So for the likes of crop flow, and if maybe we're struggling with crop flow in again, large dense crops, we can pitch the utmost edge of the augers up. So they are higher than that of the center augers. To adjust the pitch of the rear augers, it's very quick and easy to do. All we need to do is take our 18 mil spanners and loosen the locking bolt on the rear. The locking bolt on the side is now loose. And now I can then ratchet system using my 16 mil spanner or my 16 mil ratchet and ratchet the actual end of the auger up towards myself. And now you can see the actual pin location and the pitch of the auger has changed. All I then have to redo is relock that first locking nut, and that is the auger now safe and secure in position. So looking at our side dividers, we do also have some adjustments we can make. We can adjust our side risers, so the side parts of the dividers themselves. If we do feel that, again, in certain conditions, they need to protrude a little bit more, maybe we've got some crop leaning over, then we can just adjust the black handle and raise the, or lift the side pushes out and lock them into position. We also have adjustment of the whole divider itself. When the divider is fitted to the cutter bar and is in the locked position, we can physically raise and lower the contour of the divider or the height of the contour of the divider so that again, when we've got the cutter bar out in the field, we've got a constant height of the divider itself. Again, to do this, 
all we need to do is pre-loosen the two Allen key bolts here at the bottom, and then we take our Allen key and adjust them accordingly. Now, using that linkage, I have now lowered that of my divider. This is the same linkage we use on both sides of the cutter bar too. So when we need to remove our side divider off the cutter bar, again, it's very easy to do. We may need to do this if we're replacing it with the likes of our rape knife, or again, if conditions require it, we can also just remove the divider in its entirety. To do this, very, very easy and simple to do. All we need to do is move our locking handle from the lock position up to the unlock position, grab the divider itself, and pull it away. On our main reel, we can also adjust the timing or the angle of the reel tines themselves. So when would we do this? Well, again, if we may be picking up some laid crops, so we've got to get our reel very close to the ground, we can adjust the aggressiveness of the fingers too. So maybe we want to, we want to make them a little bit more aggressive if we're trying to pick up that crop from the ground itself. Or on the flip side, we can also make them less aggressive. So maybe our reel tines are potentially going to catch or dig into the ground. We can move them backwards so they're a little bit of a softer angle. And again, that's going to be protecting our reel tines. Now, to make this adjustment, we can come around to the side of the reel itself and we can see our adjustment mechanism here. We have our locking bolt and our adjustment bracket. Now, the first thing we're going to do is loosen off that of our locking bolt. We can now see the bolt itself is loose. We are then going to push our locking handle down and out of position, and we can now see the reel tines themselves have moved under their own weight. If we need to move them, all we do is put our ratchet on the buckle system whilst holding the locking lever, and we can move the angle itself. So now we've moved it into one of the other available holes. We can see our tine adjustments have moved and our locking handle has gone back into position. All we need to now do is then put the locking bolt back into position. And that's it. That's how we've quickly adjusted that of our tine angle. So on the back of the cutter bar, we also have the location for the storage of our lifters. Now, these lifters on a rigid Convio bar come as standard. When we need to access the lifters themselves, we only have to release the linch clip, move the positioning bar out of the way, and then I can slide the lifter out. And again, we can see that new lifter design we have here at Class, compared to the previous bolt system we used to have on our older cutter bars, we have now the new latching system or the new clip system to clip the lifters on. We'll take a little look at how we fit these lifters next. So we're gonna take a little look at how we're gonna fit the lifters now to the front of the cut bar. Now, when would we use the lifters? Well, if we're trying to maybe pick up crop which is laid or very close to the ground, and we just want a bit more aggressiveness of the lifters just to aid that the crop flow onto the front of the knife itself, we can then fit the lifters. The new lifters, as I've said, have a new locking mechanism. You can see that new clip system on the back rather than the bolt. A nice little trick as well, if the lifter is maybe a little bit tight, is you can just get a spanner underneath the clip, flick it over, and then the clip is loose. To fit the lifter, you have to have a look underneath that of the main knife sections to find the little locator bearings that you'll see located on the bolts. I then locate the edge of my lifter onto one of these bearings. I lift the lifter up, pulling the latch system up and over the top. And then we have it. Your lifter is now locked and fitted to the cutter bar. This is the same mechanism we use for the entirety of the bar too. So you can see I'm sat here in front of the main table auger now in our combio. So we can see that main auger, which is taking the crop from both the side and the center belts and feeding that into our feeder house. On the main auger itself, we can see the multiple retractable fingers. These are the fingers which I've mentioned have the timing adjustments for them too. So if we do need to adjust that of the timing of the retractable fingers, then we can do that through that turnbuckle system on the side. It is then adjusting these fingers we see here. 
So here we can see our stabilizer wheels for our Combio. Now, these wheels are fitted on either side of the Combio itself and are available on our 1080, 1230 and 1380 cutter bars. The idea of the wheels is a stabilization system for the cutter bar. So again, as we're taking these wide cutter bars over a large area, we've got some stabilization on the cutter bar itself. Now the stabilized wheels have a few adjustment holes. The best way to set the stabilized wheel is to move the cutter bar down into the working position and then adjust the wheels down to your ground level. So I can come in, pull the plunger, and then either move the wheels upwards or downwards to one of the pre-selected holes. Again, the stabilization wheels are on their own hydraulic system. So no matter what hole our wheel is selected for, the wheels can still have movement up and down if the cutter bar is moving onto the ground. When we're putting our Combio onto the cutter bar trolley, we need to make sure that we're lifting our wheels to a higher position so that we're not catching the cutter bar trolley with that of the stabilization wheels. These settings are both appropriate for both sides of the cutter bar. So we need to make sure that our cutter bar wheel settings are the same on the left-hand side as what they are on the right-hand side too.